This is a popular weird compound that you've seen every single biohacker use from Dave Asprey to Tim Ferriss to me. <laughs> it's a compound that has been in use for 150 years. Originally synthesized in 1876, it was first used as a dye, later as a medication, and finally as a nootropic. Why is it so popular? Because first off, it's cheap. You can buy it fairly affordably, very easily for most places, if not all places in the world. Second off, it's effective. It's been in use for 150 years for a laundry list of conditions and it's very efficacious. And finally, it's safe. It's been used for almost a century and a half with no serious adverse effects within the normal dosage range reported. So it is a very good compound to take. So it's very much a trifecta of just life enhancement, if you will. So from the cognitive side, the reason why it is so good is that it enhances mitochondria, you know, the powerhouse of the cell. And that's very important because a mitochondria dysfunction is at the root cause of a lot of neurodegenerative diseases. And so if you fix this, you rectify the dysfunction and make it into a function, it can give you a lot of impressive benefits. And it essentially just gives you more mental energy, which is what you want. Everything just works a bit better. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell that uses ATP, adenosine triphosphate as energy currency. So you increase mitochondria, you increase ATP, and you increase cognition. For example, creatine, coenzyme Q10, PQQ, all of these increase cognition and a deficiency of all of these is linked to a cognitive impairment. So this is a very reputable and effective pathway to pursue. So mitochondria function is pro-cognitive, mitochondria dysfunction is anti-cognitive. What makes methylene blue very interesting is that it's an electron donor to the electron cycle. So it basically makes everything work a lot more effectively and efficiently. And it's also a potent antioxidant, which is important for mitochondria function because the mitochondria are very susceptible and sensitive to oxidative stress. So if you inhibit this oxidation with an antioxidant, it can give you a lot of good effects and it can preserve the mitochondria's cellular integrity. It also is a mouse, so a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. It is a reversible one and is more mild to moderate in its strength. So it inhibits the breakdown of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, increasing the levels of those neurotransmitters, which is very good for a subset of people that have a genotype where they naturally have higher levels of that enzyme. So they naturally have lower levels of those neurotransmitters. So if you inhibit it, you can increase the levels for those people and that will be a very good, I'm not gonna say life-changing, but a very positively life-enhancing effect. I would exercise it with caution with other compounds that inhibit mal a when you're first cycling it. Serotonin syndrome isn't really an issue with this. I've never heard of anyone having serotonin syndrome from methylene blue. I've never heard of anyone having serotonin syndrome at all. Even when I've been to the hospital and I'm talking to the paramedics, they don't even know what serotonin syndrome is. They, when I asked them about it, they gave me the most dumbfounded look. Within the normal dosage range, this is very much not a concern. Obviously, don't go overboard but just treat it with caution, treat it with respect and it'll treat you with respect, right? And thirdly, it's antiviral. And this is very important because I personally believe that there's gonna be more pandemics in the future because you have people in power saying the same thing. And oftentimes I think they're kind of puppet masters where they kind of pull the strings a little bit where you have Bill Gates, the head of the WHO, the health ministers of multiple countries, <laughs> Anthony Fauci is saying that there's gonna be more pandemics. So I think it's a smart thing to invest in your future, to have compounds like methylene blue in storage just in case, because if you look at it, methylene blue is a parent compound to hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine itself. And those drugs are banned or pseudo banned during the pandemic, or they were blackmailed or they were blacklisted. So you can go above that, you can get a compound that is antiviral, that is safe, that is effective, you know, safe and effective. And I think regulations are gonna get worse. It's gonna get more strict no matter where you live to get compounds like this. So if I was you, I would invest it right now so you can in, so you can reap the rewards in the future for yourself because it is fairly cheap and it is a very effective nootropic compound. And even so, it's been shown to inhibit the virus spike protein stronger than both of those medications downstream of it hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine itself so my experience with it is a very positive experience the first few times that i took it i just put a little drop on the tongue a few drops on the tongue very unscientific i know and i did get some strong effects then eventually i titrated up to one milligram or two milligrams. I kind of stayed within that range just because I'm sensitive to compounds. So I usually need a little dose to elicit a strong effect. 
and it just enhances your mental energy except a weird thing about it is it also kind of relaxes you a little bit like it kind of gets you a little bit amped up except you also have that serotonergic hug where you don't feel very stimulated you feel mentally alert but not mentally anxious and that's good and that's important and you just feel like you just think clearer you can connect ideas a bit better it's good for memory recall it's good for mood except it stains everything and anything so be careful especially like if you're using it over a carpet or anything like that i would wrap it in paper towel like it's a newborn baby just because it can turn on you at the worst moment and stay in everything. Methylene blue also has a hermetic dose response in that it has pro-cognitive antioxidant effects at a low dose and pro-oxidation and anti-cognitive effects at a high dose. So it's best to stay within the lower dosage range. And even to its safety, it's even been used with kids in trials with no adverse effects recorded. Combine it with compounds like coenzyme Q10, PQQ, Silagite, all of those beautiful mitochondria enhancing compounds. Take it in the morning as it is stimulating. It can make your pee blue, which can be a little bit weird. Like it kind of turns you into a smurf a little bit, except overall it's a good compound and it's a really effective compound that I would recommend to try. If you guys are curious about another compound that is a little bit underrated, a little bit under the radar, shh, don't tell anybody. Check out this video I did on oxyracetam, which in my opinion is the best memory enhancing racetam because it doesn't only enhance your memory consolidation, it also increases your mental energy in that you can study harder, you can study longer, and you can study better. So check out that video on the screen.